Hi everyone, it's Allison. I'm in my violin studio and today I want to talk about the coordination between your left hand and your bow arm. Um, I've been getting a few questions on general technique as opposed to specific pieces, so I'm going to try and do a few short clips. Um, coordination between the left hand and the right hand is a, is a, is a, a tricky issue for a lot of people. Um, it's something that you can avoid completely for the first year or two um, and and then it, it bites <laughs> you know it catches up with you um, you can get through the first two books of Suzuki um, or any similar beginning stuff and and then you start getting to tunes where you have a bunch of 16th notes in them and all of a sudden stuff doesn't line up and it doesn't sound good and um, you wonder what's going on so when you watch a violinist play, you generally think that the left hand and the right hand are together. And uh, it's certainly what it looks like and it's what it sounds like. And actually, there's a little bit of a secret. Um, there's a little bit of um, a delay there, one say. I'm going to show you. I'm going to take Song of the Wind from the first Suzuki book. Okay, you may remember it, or if you know it. Okay, so, fairly simple, but watch. This is in slow motion. You play, then you place a finger. Stop, place. Stop, place. Okay, so... Um, I skipped two things. From the A string, the bow is stopped. It has to be stopped when you go to the E. Or else we hear the cross, which is not a lovely thing. Stop, cross. Make sure your finger thing is right, and then go. Okay, so that was three things. Stop, cross, play. Now I have these repeated E's. And um, even though there's, it's legato on the page and I don't have any fingers to put, but I still need to articulate between those notes. If there's no articulation, actually the notes all become one. So it's like lines between color sections on a drawing, on a, when you're coloring or paint by numbers or something. So stop. And, um, I know some people might say for legato, why do I need to stop the bow? It's supposed to be smooth. Um, but the truth of the matter is to get a really good legato with a clean sound, um, a clear, clean sound, and a really precise rhythm, you have those little stops in there. They're very subtle and they become, a, a, it's hard to explain, there's kind of layers, you know, of how you're moving, but it's always at the bottom and that's what keeps things clean and uh, rhythmical. Whoops. So it's it's really ultimately it's a very fractional difference. It's not really obvious, but practice it really slowly and then when you're playing don't worry about it. And it's something that if you practice this slowly whenever you can, um, your brain will kind of sort it out and you know think about other things when you're actually playing through but that's how you practice something in order to clean up the coordination there are definitely passages where you're not going to be able to do that and to get through um well i didn't pick one ahead of time um the other one i wanted to show you actually is the the gavotte by gossick quicker no I wouldn't do it any faster than that it's allegretto which is not too quick um, so you see uh, if you can see my hand place lift 
lift. Well, actually, it was a tuck under and then lift place. Cross. Stop. Cross. Drop your arm. Place your finger and then play. How many things was that? About five. And then bow back, arm back, place, play. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there are places where it doesn't work so well. That's maybe... Mm. I'm not going to be able to practice that passage like that. But in the passages where you can practice it slowly and really separate the things, it cleans it up and and you're, you're practicing a good procedure. And when you get to the other ones, um, then you have good tools at your disposal to be able to make it as clean as those ones can be. So I I hope that answers a couple of questions and good luck with that.